Hello, everybody. My name is Jose Navarro Betancourt, and I am the scientific director of Quadroscope. We invest in early stage biotechnology companies aiming to dramatically extend human health span by treating the hallmarks of aging. In this video, I will highlight some significant developments in the longevity biotech industry that took place in 2022, despite the economic challenges of the year. We will cover the topics in this outline. Please keep in mind that this is only a high level overview because it is impossible to explain all the details and the implications of these developments in a limited time frame. You can read a summary of this presentation by following the link to our website in the description below. That report includes reference links to the original publications and press releases. Now, let's dive in. Senolytics, or treatments to selectively remove senescent cells, are entering human clinical trials to treat different age-related diseases. Unity Biotechnology, a biotech company backed by billionaires Jeff Bezos and Peter Thiel, reported positive results from a multi-center randomized clinical trial of a new senolytic drug to treat diabetic macular edema, a common cause of blindness in diabetic patients. Several companies, including Decidious Therapeutics, Oisin Biotechnologies, and Clara Biotech are developing senolytic therapies to treat debilitating chronic conditions, such as pulmonary fibrosis, diabetes, and cancer. Mitochondrial replacement to restore cellular energy production is expected to be highly impactful for age reversal. Minovia, a biotech company based in Israel, demonstrated the feasibility of transplanting mitochondria in humans. Although Minovia is treating a specific disease, their achievement suggests that a similar treatment could be used to enhance health span. In Minovia's clinical trial, children with single large-scale mitochondrial DNA deletion syndromes, a type of severe congenital mitochondrial diseases, received healthy mitochondria from their mothers. And the benefits of the therapy were still evident one year after the transplant. Multiple startups are working on treatments to restore or replace aging mitochondria, including Matrix Bio, Selby, Stealth Biotherapeutics, and Yuba Biosciences. As people age, cholesterol builds up in the body and can lead to deadly diseases, such as atherosclerosis and non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, also known as fatty liver disease. Declarity Therapeutics, a Sense Foundation spin-out, developed a medication that targets and removes oxidized cholesterol. The company plans to begin clinical trials in the UK in 2023, taking advantage of the innovative licensing and access pathway, a new regulatory pathway to accelerate drug development. Repair Biotechnologies, a quadroscope portfolio company working on cell therapy and mRNA therapy to degrade cholesterol, recently reached a milestone and is ready to hold a pre-investigational new drug meeting with the FDA. This is the first step on the road to clinical trials in the US. If proven feasible, cellular reprogramming could restore cell health and resilience and also treat diseases and disabilities caused by aging. 2021 and 2022 were the setup years for reprogramming with billions of dollars in funding and several ventures founded. Biotech companies working on reprogramming include Altos Labs, New Limit, Calico, Life Biosciences, Rejuvenate Bio, and Tron Biotechnologies. An Altos Labs scientist in the UK, Dr. Rake, developed a method to reprogram cells and reversed their biological age by 30 years. Another Altos Labs scientist in San Diego, Dr. Ispisua Belmonte showed that long-term reprogramming was safe and could reverse age-related organ damage in mice. His group also developed an RNA-based therapy to reverse biological age and reduce inflammation in mice. Other companies also made progress on cellular reprogramming. According to a recent press release, Thorn Biotechnologies used a reprogramming mRNA cocktail to rejuvenate human skin cells, increasing cell division and collagen production. In a recent preprint, Rejuvenate Bio reported the development of a cellular reprogramming adeno-associated virus gene therapy that extended the remaining lifespan of naturally aged mice by 109%. More recently, 
Dr. David Sinclair's group at Harvard published a paper describing how they invented a mouse model that helps understand the role of epigenetics in aging, thus accelerating the development of longevity treatments based on epigenetic reprogramming. Base editing, a high precision gene editing method has begun clinical trials in 2022 and they may offer new alternatives to implement gene therapy for health span extension. Compared to traditional crispr cas 9 systems, base editing is safer and more precise because it does not require breaking both DNA strands and can modify single letters of the genetic code. In May 2022, a research group at University College London used base editing for the first time to generate off-the-shelf CAR T-cells and induce remission in a patient with relapsed E-cell leukemia. Two months later, Birth Therapeutics dosed the first human with a base editing gene therapy to treat heterozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, a disease that exhibits excessive blood cholesterol. It is interesting to mention that Birth Therapeutics licensed their base editing technology from Beam Therapeutics, a biotech company getting ready to use base editing in a clinical trial evaluating off-the-shelf CAR T-cells in 2023. Prime Editing, another emerging genetic method, allows more extensive genetic modifications than base editing, but is still in preclinical development. And actually, Beam Therapeutics licensed prime editing technology from another biotech named Prime Medicine. Commercially available drugs and therapies have the potential to treat aging. However, commercialization of these therapies is unlikely to generate sufficient profit to attract venture capital. For example, metformin, acarbos, quercetin, quercetin, rapamycin, and the therapeutic plasma exchange have extended health span in animal studies and small clinical trials, but the benefits have not been confirmed in large randomized clinical trials. Rapamycin and metformin are off-patent medications that reverse multiple hallmarks of aging, and they may be useful for rejuvenation of the immune system. Caloric restriction may also rejuvenate the immune system. A recent analysis of the Calorie Clinical Trial which stands for Comprehensive Assessment of Long-Term Effects of Reducing Intake of Energy Trial, showed that two years of mild caloric restriction produced significant gains in thymus size in middle-aged adults, an interesting discovery that should be investigated in older adults. Another approach to treating aging could be a combination of currently available therapies, including senolytics, rapamycin, therapeutic plasma exchange, stem cell therapy, metformin, and more. Formal structured studies are needed to properly evaluate these combination therapies. Given that these treatments are off-patent and widely available, there is little promise of returns for private investors, leaving it up to the philanthropic community to fund these important projects. Nonprofits, including Dr. Aubrey de Grey's new Longevity Escape Velocity Foundation, will be undertaking some of this work. On a related topic, the National Institute on Aging runs the Interventions Testing Program to identify and validate treatments that extend lifespan and health span in mice. Unlike for-profit companies, programs like the Interventions Testing Program are known to be transparent and encourage collaboration. For example, the Interventions Testing Program offers its partners access to research space and the mice colonies. Identifying objective biomarkers that capture the effects of longevity interventions may help convince the FDA to consider aging as a study endpoint. Defining aging biomarkers by searching existing trials initiative, also known as FAST initiative, addresses this need by analyzing published clinical trials to identify biomarkers to be used as endpoints in future studies on aging. The targeting aging with metformin clinical trial or TAME trial is the first large-scale study to test the effects of metformin on aging and age-related diseases. Unlike traditional clinical trials that focus on a single condition, TAME aims to show that metformin can delay the onset of any one of multiple age-related diseases. The study is led by Dr. Nirbar Silai, the scientific director of the American Federation for Aging Research and a member of Quadroscope's advisory board. If successful, 
The TAMES trial will set a precedent for trials evaluating longevity treatments that do not target a specific disease. The SuperAgers initiative continues its progress as it studies the genes that contribute to a longer lifespan by building the largest database of centenarian families. The project is a collaboration between the American Federation for Aging Research, the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and Boston University, with Dr. Nir Barsilai participating as a co-investigator. The Healthy Longevity Medicine Society intends to establish longevity medicine as an independent medical specialty and set clinical standards for longevity treatments. The Healthy Longevity Medicine Society Council brings together leading experts in longevity from around the world, including Dr. Nir Barsilai. The seminal paper by Dr. Lopez Otin and colleagues titled The Hallmarks of Aging defined the targets of longevity biotech companies and was recently expanded to introduce three new hallmarks of aging, disabled macroautophagy, chronic inflammation, and the dysbiosis. These biological processes have been studied by longevity scientists for several years, but were recently highlighted as independent hallmarks due to the growing understanding of the biology of aging. The Hevolution Foundation was created in 2021 by a Saudi royal decree and is sponsored by the Saudi government. The foundation committed $1 billion per year to fund longevity research and invest in longevity biotech companies. In 2022, Hevolution awarded $8.5 million to fund American Federation for Aging Research New Investigator Awards, $2 million to sponsor longevity impetus grants, $2.6 million to support geroscience research in Saudi Arabia, and $5 million to support grants reviewed by the National Institute on Aging. Publicly announced funding that we can account for amounts to a little over $18 million, well short of a billion promised. Perhaps this is a slow start. If you like this kind of content and you would like more people to see it, please consider subscribing. Also, visit our website, quadrosco.com, to read about interesting news in the longevity industry. Goodbye.